Let's take a look at some DIN rail mounting power indicators. These are basically mains voltage indicators that can be used in a panel and you hook them up and they've got three LEDs, one LED or three LED. You can get them in various combinations. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually connect these up so we can see them lit. I shall do that now. One moment, please. They are wired. Let's hook them up and see what happens. So this thing is off. So I'll stuff this wire in here into this speaker connector on a cheap Chinese tester as used in factories and we'll power it up and see what happens. They're quite bright. That's very acceptable. 2.5 watts. You're getting a lot of flicker. I'm not surprised you're getting a lot of flicker. Tell you what, let's see if we can do something about that by changing the exposure. One moment, please. That's better. You know, that's not bad. I didn't expect it to be that bright. I wonder if it's a capacitive dropper. Although one of them, uh, I've only really looked at that aspect of one of them, was marked AC or DC, which might suggest it's just resistors. I wonder how hot those resistors are getting. Probably quite hot if it is resistors. Anyway, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, running at 2.5, seven, about half or each ish. Although sometimes this unit uh, goes a bit sort of inaccurate. <laughs> that's the best way to describe it. It's not super accurate. Right, tell you what, watch your eyes. The light is coming back. The light is back, and so is the flicker. Let's start opening them up. So I'll turn the power off. Actually, I'm kind of inclined to say, let's plug them into the anti because I just wanted the control of the switch this one. Let's grab the anti and it should give a more accurate power indication because it is a more accurate meter. So I shall stuff that one in there. I shall twist these together in a reassuring manner and stuff that one in there. Still bits of live metal sticking out, but that's what you get with speaker terminals for 240 volts. What's it showing? It's showing two watts. 0.998 per five, that means it's resistive, uh, 8 milliamps. Okay, so roughly 1 milliamps each then if it's 8 milliamps, and there's 7 of them. Okay, that bit of it is done. Let's open them up. They're all made by the same company. So I would expect, we'll just pop these wires out first. I would expect the uh, circuitry inside to be fairly similar in them all. So let's uh, get these wires out first. Just rip the wires out. It's worth mentioning that the single LED one has two terminals for its uh, connections. The large one here has uh, six terminals, uh, two for each color. But the small one, to save space, it has one common terminal and then a terminal per color. Let's put these wires out. could have paused while I did this, but I didn't. They're actually better than I was expecting, anyway. Very visual. There's roughly four LEDs per um, indicator. Right, I shall stuff those wires over to the side. Grab a spudger. This one has no... The other ones have little stickers on them. You're not supposed to be opening, apparently. That's all right. It doesn't apply to us. Let's see how easy these are to open. Are they going to be easy to open? I'm not sure which way the clips are mounted in these, but we'll find out in due course. Maybe we won't find out in due course. Maybe I'll pause while I open these because it looks as though these could be pressed together quite tightly. I shall have another go. Yeah, they're not, they're not really wanting to come apart too easily, are they? Oh, you know what? Are these, is it clipped in over there? Is that what's holding it together? What if I go like this? Oh, right, okay. Right, I'll take it out the right way, shall I? There we go. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? Oh, it's a 100k resistor. Oh, and a diode, so it is half wave. Uh, and then it's just a circuit board with four LEDs in it. Right, I'll give you a close-up of these shortly. What about the next one? Is this just going to be the same thing, roughly? This one, at least we know how to open it now. It's very easy to open when you know how, and you don't just prize randomly at the side. Well, I say that. This one is not necessarily going to open easily. Yes. Can, it, can everything go wrong here? Maybe I'll click that one back down. That would have made a super loud speaker pop. Oh, this is not coming out easily. 
let's use more force. Crunch, crunch, pop. Yeah, when you get one out at one side, that really jams at the other side. Oh, that's super irritating. Let's see if I can not destroy the spudger. Yeah, this this is not going to plan, is it? Right, tell you what. Uh, what about this one? Let's get a niff. And we'll uh, slit this one down here. And see how this one is held together. And then I'll work on that other one afterwards. I'll take a close-up of these uh, circuit boards in them. I don't think they're going to be that exciting. This also has the little clip at the side. Unusual, I was expecting the clips to be along the sides, as you saw when I completely failed to open it. Is this one going to be any better? God, they are so tight. They're so tight, and when you lever it up slightly, it jams the next one. That is annoying. Okay. Oh, there it goes. This one is probably going to be the same. 100k resistor, perhaps? 100k resistors and diodes and sleeves, but they've got less space here, so they've put the diodes in sleeving there for insulation. But it's the same little circuit boards uh, with LEDs. Are they? I hope they're in series. That would be good if they're in series. Right, I'll have another go at this one. If it doesn't come off easily, I shall just use brute force here and stab myself in the process, probably. Oh, it's out. It's almost out. Oh, and this one is uh, held in in some magical way with more clips. The Most of this video is now me just desperately trying to unclip things. Oh. Oh. Oh, right, it's got a little cup here with the LEDs. Right, tell you what, I shall take a close-up of the LED assemblies and then I'll draw the schematic. It's not going to be a terribly exciting schematic, but I'll give a close-up of these so you can actually see the construction. One moment, please. And resume. The units are back together and I have analysed the track layout. Nothing really terribly scientific about this. I'll zoom down in this and I'll actually move them up a little bit as well so you can see the... The main bits of interest. Actually, that's a bit too much. No, it's fine. It is literally sort of connection in the middle one with the round circuit board going through the LEDs, sneaking across diagonally, and then going back down. So it is just four LEDs in the series. With this circuit board, it just zigzags backwards and forwards. And likewise, with this one, it just zigzags backwards and forwards. So it is just four LEDs in the series. If we take a look at their schematic, and it's really not that complicated. We see that it is a diode, the four LEDs in the series, and it makes sense to have four like that. It's a bit, bit of built-in redundancy. Also, it means that for the same current, you're getting four times the brightness. They could have actually used more. They could actually have used one of the modern LED lighting LEDs where they have like 12 chips in the one package, and that would have actually made it even brighter. But there's a 100K resistor rated quarter watt. At 230 volts AC, and it's important to know AC here, it's only active for half the time, and that works out at roughly 1.1 milliamp average and roughly just under quarter watt average based on 230 volts, which is the rating minus about, say, 10 volts for the LEDs. Now, something worthy of note here, it does say AC or DC on them. If you actually used DC, it would double the dissipation. It'd be twice as bright, but that resistor would then be running at twice its power rating. Uh, another thing that's worth mentioning is that a diode in series, it has a bit of leakage in reverse polarity. And that's all right with red and yellow LEDs, but with green LEDs or blue or white, the gallium nitride ones, they're not so happy at that tiny reverse leakage current. They do not like being reverse biased at all. Um, so I wonder how that's going to affect the lifespan of them. But the red and yellow would be absolutely fine. If I was choosing indicators for something like this, I'd maybe just choose red indicators. Although it is useful having the other colours as well. But that is it. They're very, very simple. A lot simpler in a way than I was expecting. I was hoping for something a bit more. But then they are just engineered down to a cost. And in most applications where they're just toggling on and off, um, they should last a decent length of time. But that is it. I won't even try and pronounce that name. Uh, it's, it doesn't even make sense. Uh, but... Uh, 
interesting little indicators. They probably have their uses in panels where you don't have stuff like PLCs with their built-in LEDs. It's useful just to have this to show when 200 and 20 to 240 volts or even 120 of these would like just a bit dimmer uh, but to show when that is present quite useful to have that indication